Hello, Ms. Minnick here, helping my students in an AP Computer Science uh, A class understand the difference between classes and interfaces in Java. So in this situation here, um, I sometimes give quizzes in this high school class setting, but uh, anybody watching this could just learn this uh, theory without having an annoying quiz come after it. What I typically do is I tell the students orally, sometimes uh, with a prompted uh, piece of uh, paper, I tell them that they have to write a class. Mm, the class name is always specified, and I would say, hey, write a student class or a Fortnite video player class or just a player class. So hmm, let's just say that today's class is to be uh, named students. So the student, the student would write the word student on their paper, but knowing that it's fashionable and good style to always capitalize the name of a class, the student to get full credit on this quiz would need an uppercase S here. And uh, we'll talk about interfaces here in the, uh, five minutes from now. And then I would also tell the student that, hey, the student class should have two or more instance variables in it, well, one or more. And I would probably specify those instance variables. And uh, today I'm just gonna say, hey, the instance variables should represent the age and the name of the student. Some people call instance variables properties or fields or it goes by other names. And some people put their instance variables at the bottom of a class definition. Other people put them at the top. There's exactly zero people in the world who put them in the middle or scatter them around like grass seeds. So I am in the mood today to put mine at the bottom, but if you have a different style, like such as putting on the top, that's fine. So I'm uh, going to put the word age here, but I'm going to provide a better name uh, than just age. As the class developer that's writing the code, I'm going to name this instance variable my age. Uh, and the way I teach Java, that's just my style. Uh, the prefix is my, I capitalize using camel case notation H. And uh, the other specified instance variable is to represent the student's name. So a good name for that instance variable would be my name. So instance variables should be inside the class. And therefore the class needs a set of curly races. And because it's a class, you need the keyword class in front of it. For example, students that take this class that I'm teaching right now had a Python course, usually the year before, and they wrote functions, DEF, defined functions. Well, the word DEF was needed all the time. In this situation, because it's a class in Java, we use the word class. And uh, classes should usually be public, especially if you're taking an AP exam. Um, they just always want your class to be public. So I'm going to make the, I have to type the word public here. And the curly brace should be lined up there uh, for good style. So far so good based on uh, the way I teach this course. Instance variables. When you declare them in the definition file of a class, they need a data type associated with them because Java is a strongly typed language. You can't just, unlike Python, be like loosey-goosey and say, oh, today my zip code is 19610 with double quotes around it. But tomorrow I'm going to call it 19,610 and consider it to be an integer. No, in Python you can do that, but not in Java. No, in Java you have to put a data type here. And the data types that we study in my course are int, double, boolean, and we often use string. So with an age, I could be exact and say I'm 51.5 years old, but no, I'm just gonna like round to the nearest number and actually I'm gonna round down because I want to be younger. So int, a whole number would be a good data type to choose. For a name, it would be obvious to make it a string and strings, are a class in Java rather than a primitive data type. 
So the word string has to have a capital S there. Furthermore, pro instance variables in classes should be private according to the AP exam especially, and just good encapsulation information hiding techniques in an object-oriented programming language like Java, we should make them private. Now, excuse my poor indentation here. Uh, so you would do better than this if you were typing this, certainly, or even handwriting it. The curly braces should be out here more. That should have been indented. Okay, do not set these equal to zero or null string. No, even though that would technically compile and work, it's better styled to just put semicolons there. So far, I have a class that has two instance variables in it. And the whole purpose of a class, if you remember, is that it be reusable. So it be reusable in projects like Fortnite or school grading software or anywhere else you would ever need students to like move around the screen or just in an adventure game be something that's just behind the scenes. and. Uh, is updated and worked with. So there's a reusable student class definition. Um, I don't have time in this video. I've taught it earlier in this school year to show you how to write a default constructor, but you would have default constructors here, or one of them, you'd have exactly one default constructor typed out, which is essentially where you set age, my age equal to zero, and probably my name equal to like empty quotes. You may have one or more other constructors with parameters. You may have one accessor method for each instance variable, such as get age would be a good name for that accessor method, etc. Because you would have get name also. You would have a setter, also known as a mutator or modifier method. Set age would be a good method to have here with, of course, parentheses. Uh, and I'm not going to close off the parentheses because this would need a parameter here. Uh, that parenthesis would be empty. But my point is, this would just be all be stuff that you would have to write out or type out on a quiz or in an assignment. Last of all, you would have what I call interesting methods in here, or just plain methods, such as a student would like do homework. So you would have a bunch of these things in your class, and all together, this is called behavior. The list of methods is called the object behavior. The object, which would be a student object coming from the student class, would have behavior. These two things down here, also known as instance variables, they are called state. So this is called the state of an object. It's status. Like in Fortnite, something on its health bar. Your damage, your health, things that are equal to zero or a hundred, or even words or phrases. So behavior and state together are in a class. Now, you could program for the rest of your life and develop software without ever knowing about interfaces. In fact, some computer languages don't really have something equivalent to interfaces like Java does, or they're, they're different in a way that they don't really match what I'm about to teach in the last half of this video. But now that I've taught this during the school year and expect you to start using it out there in the world of software development or answering AP multiple choice questions or the design question that's typically uh, expected on part two of the AP exam, you should know about interfaces for all those reasons above. Okay, so what's an interface? Interfaces aren't really something that's reusable. Well, it is reusable, but it's not reusable in the way that a student would be reusable as an object in a variable somewhere in a public static void main string args client program, which isn't being shown here in this example. So this is code that would be in a file, but reusable in other files. No, an interface is quite different. So let's uh, learn about that. An interface, if I asked you to write a quiz tomorrow, perhaps, on an interface, I would say, write a interface named somethingable. Often, not required though, often interfaces end with the, the suffix a bowl. 
Uh, of course, you'll see plenty of ex counter examples, but let's just say that something is listable. So I would ask you to write an interface called listable. And you know what? Students are listable. At our school, we have something called class rank. So we list students by rank. But sometimes we list students by alphabetical order, last name, a major, first name, minor for tiebreakers. Or we uh, list students by their student number, uh, which is arbitrary as far as I know, and not related to the, alphabetic, the alphabetical order of your last names. Anyway, to be determined by implemented details later how we list things, but an interface is just a agreed upon uniform set of behaviors that anything that's listable would play nice with other things that are listable. So usually you only have one or two or three methods named in an interface. So a method that I'm proposing or would ask you to include here on this quiz would be say a sort method. And I would probably tell you on an AP exam question or I would tell you on a quiz tomorrow what the name, what the exact spelling of that method would be. But I could leave it up to your uh, discretion. But right now I'm in the mood to tell you that it needs to be spelled S-O-R-T, lowercase, the word sort. And I'm in the mood to tell you that it would take no parameters. This method, this function or method would take no parameters and that it would be, uh, it would return nothing. So there'd be no, what we call return type in Java. So when there's no return type, you're required to put the word void there. This is review from uh, earlier course uh, of teaching in this class that I'm teaching right now. But anyway, there's your method signature. It's the return type, the name of the method, complete with case sensitive spelling, and whether it has parameters or not the method signature. What I did not put here is curly braces with if statements and loops and other programming logic. You are not allowed to type out the body, the implementation code of a method in an interface. You're not allowed. You'll get a compile error. It goes against the whole purpose of what an interface is. That is very different from over here where you are required, usually, if it's not abstract, which I don't want to cover in this video, you are required to provide details and actual code here with curly braces and uh, code that can be quite complicated to write inside the curly braces here of these methods, including your constructors. But over here, you're not allowed to put that. In fact, you're required I'll make this bright red, to put a semicolon here. You would not put a semicolon over here, no way. Not on your function method headers. It would not work. So you need a red semicolon here. And another method that I would say you should have in listable would be like the ability to select one song from your listed playlist of songs or to select one student as the student who gives a speech at graduation, or one student to be whatever, the student that um, helps the homeless uh, with the service club uh, tomorrow. So select item would be a method name. I'm going to say that it returns an object uh, for reasons I don't wanna get into right now. I'll just choose the word string here as the return type. And I'll say that um, there would be like an int parameter here, uh, maybe the, the numbered position of what you're selecting. And you don't have to put the name of the parameter here, but I'll just put num anyway as a filler there. And very required, very much, very important in this video to highlight is we would put a semicolon here and one more. A uh, method that I would probably put on a quiz tomorrow would be uh, one called remove item. 
that is the ability, the behavior to be able to remove an item from some set of things that are in a list and therefore that are listable. And you would need to specify the position, the numbered item that you're removing, or perhaps you would supply a string with the actual thing that you're removing, assuming that it's all strings, which I don't want to talk about the, the object class, but normally I'd put the word object there. But for AP exam compatibility, I'll put the word string there. And uh, you may return that object or not. I'll say that you're not returning it, so avoid. So I will tell you on the quiz, if I were to give a quiz, what the return types are for each of these methods, what their spellings are, and whether or not they have any parameters. You just would have to know to put semicolons here and no curly braces and no implementation code. So that is what an interface is. It's just behavior. What you're not allowed to have in an interface is, well, you're not allowed to have any state. Absolutely not. You don't want any instance variables or properties, in other words. You would not have any constructors because if you don't have my age, there's no reason to set my age equal to zero. So you would never have these. You would never have accessors and modifiers that start with get or set because, again, those two things have to do with instance variables. And since you have no state, no status, no data, we sometimes call this also, uh, you would not have any of these. So this is called abstract. A, a, uh, an interface is called abstract because it's not detailed. It's just loops and to be determined how sort sorts. Whereas over here, a class is usually considered to be concrete. It's definite. It's defined. It's like known. You know what the property instance variables are. You know that they're set equal to zero dependably. You know that uh, how it works. And do you have any questions, Braden? Good, because you can ask after I'm done recording this video. But in a class, like an object-oriented language like Java allows for. And so in Python's object-oriented too, we just didn't study it in the course that you probably took last year. Um, we have behavior and state in concrete classes. In a list, in an interface, I meant to say, we only have behavior and we, it's not even implemented, so it's not concrete, it's abstract. Okay, to finish this up so that you got all the points on the quiz, you would need to also be sure to uh, put the word interface here instead of class. And uh, interfaces are always, always, always public. And uh, certainly on the AP exam, classes are always public, even though classes technically could be private or protected or certain other levels of scope. But over here, it has to be public. So that I'll underline in red, that's like a must. And the word public is optional. It can be put here, it doesn't have to be. So I'll just put that in purple, I guess. That's kind of optional to put the word public in front of each of these. It's assumed to be public, even if you don't have the word public there. So it's default. And the AP exam, as far as I know, doesn't really care. Um, and I, I technically don't care as long as it compiles and executes. Okay, so there we go. That's an example of an interface that I happen to name listable. And here's a class, but I'm not done yet. So are they connected in any way? No, absolutely not. But the whole purpose of having what's called an interface is so that a class can realize that interface or what's called implement that interface. So by typing the keyword implements here and then naming the interface that you want to implement, a listable, by typing this here in the class header line of code, this now links the two 
in a way that you are now required, I'd say in this section right here, to actually type out and implement the public methods, sort, select item, and remove item, complete with a method signature, copied and pasted or retyped exactly as is right here. You are not allowed to change the spelling, the uppercaseness, or anything. And don't put the semicolon though. You now have to provide code, such as if statements, loops, local variables, and such. This code that I don't have room or reason to write out here would have to be typed out here, but not here. So in other words, the details, the concrete details are specified here, whereas they were not specified over here. That would allow you to rank students by class rank if you wanted to. Now we don't have grades as an instance variable, but we could rank them say by age or maybe by last name. But if another class that I don't have room for on this page called public class elephant implemented listable, the elephant class, which might not even have my age and my name as instance variables, it might have something like my weight and my ear size. And in the sort method that would be required to implement in the elephant class, in the if statement and loop logic down here, we could use my weight as a criteria for sorting a list of elephants, where normally you would have like an array list probably of elephants somewhere in a somewhere else that I don't have code for. So that allows an interface to be used but in a way that it's flexible by each different class that's realizing or implementing that particular interface. So if Chevy wants a car to have a different type of air conditioning than say a Ford car, as long as they both implement air, condition air conditionable, they could have different mechanical ways of the air conditioner working in that driverless car of the future. Now, true, I'm just making this up, but you know, I could see that happening out there in a job that you might have if you work for one of these companies like Tesla or uh, Google that makes driverless cars somewhere in 10 years. You would use interfaces because then your car's software would be more compatible with rival companies but yet still allow it to be different and have proprietary features so that things are plug and play and work together on the roads of America. And we don't need a separate set of interstate highways for Tesla cars that are separate from another Google car highway. They all can share the same highway because they all implement drivable or other interfaces that have to do with cars. Okay, so uh, the stuff in black is stuff that would be on the quiz tomorrow or any day in the future, and then possibly you'd have to implement a constructor or a get age or set age method because I have taught that in uh, other situations. Uh, hope this helps you understand how interfaces relate to classes, although I have online interactive examples with code that you can also uh, see for your uh, learning uh, as well.